Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a production tip and trick tutorial video. So this is in support of our pack S'mores. I wanted to put together a video giving you some tips and tricks to create a marshmallow style drop. Now I know some of you might be reaching for the X because you may not be fans of marshmallows music, but there's gonna be some really cool just theory based and as well as production based concepts in this video that are applicable to a lot of different genres. So we're gonna look at bass, drums, and leads, and kind of talk about the theory, both music and production, with each of those elements. So let's start. All right, so let's listen to the build of this track into the drop. Obviously, this drop, drop is patterned or influenced by Alone, uh, to a lesser extent, Wolves, and even Summer. Now, Marshmallow has a bunch of different tracks, and he doesn't do this type of drop in every track, but this is probably the type of drop that got him the most notoriety. I mean, he's getting anywhere from, I think it's like 25 million streams a month on Spotify. So from a listener's perspective, he's doing something right. But from a production standpoint, a lot of us hear his music and probably are like, oh, that's really simple, and you might write it off. But... I'm, I'm a big proponent in that really simple, catchy music is a little bit difficult to do because you're limiting yourself to what you can do and how many, you know, how many sounds, the, the different timbre, the different textures you can create. So even if you hate his music, there's still some interesting things he's, he's doing. Now, the first thing I want to point out here is actually that uh, the, it happens before the drop, and that's this first tip here, is having a juxtaposition going into your drop. And by juxtaposition, I mean you switch things up, right? You go from one vibe to the next. If you listen to Alone, he's got this real kind of a, you know, like a pitched up format uh, type of vocal. He's got a really basic bass line, kind of like something like this. You know, he's just working his way up. He's not doing anything crazy. It's kind of patterned off of like an old 80s bass line, like where you do the octave. Right, and it's it's with sounds that I think are kind of by design, a little bit cheesy, a little bit um, they're not as good as they could be. But I think that's by design because when it builds into the drop, then you hear the drop sounds. The drop is usually a little bit more current, whether it's rhythmically or just texture, timbre, and sound design. So let's listen to some examples. So let's listen to Alone real quick. So here's the drop, or here's the build. Right, really basic super saw sound, really basic that saw bass, and then the pitched up vocals. And then the drop. Way more modern sounding, right? But it's still minimal, it's still a little bit kind of cheesy pop, you know, bright. But that's, that's that. if you listen to this in isolation, this drop doesn't sound as cool, but when you hear it post the build, right? That's when it starts to sound cool. Let's listen to another example. So this example is Wolves. This is one of the darker songs he's done. And he juxtaposed this, switched it up quite a bit in terms of not only sound, but also rhythm and just instrumentation. So this song starts out with guitars and the build or the chorus is very guitar heavy. And some of the guitar, some parts of the guitar have an accent on upbeats, right? Same with the snare. Now the juxtaposition is when we get to the drop, the guitars are gone, it's all synth. When we get to the drop, it's very downbeat heavy. And uh, just, yeah, this the vibe changes, right? It goes from organic instruments to synthesis to kind of a little bit of upbeat accents and then all downbeat. So here it is. Right now, this, juxt this juxtaposition idea is just a sound idea in music in general. But Marshmallow has really brought it to a new level in some of these tracks, where it's just really changing the vibe of the song. So, in this example, going back to the Logic session, same thing. I have a real simple bass line, 
Mm. And that's upset. Uh, that's uh, that's accenting the ups, right? Because we have the one, one, and two, and three, and four, and right. So it kind of has this. It's not as downbeat heavy. We have a pretty cheap sounding choir, but by design. And then this pluck, which has you know t some syncopation on it. It's not just all on the downs, and that builds with that with the vocal. Same thing as alone. Then we get to the drop section. Bass is all on the down, right? <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, even these chord sounds are. And then the leads aren't all on the down, but it's we kind of go from the legato lead with both the vocal and this pad to the more staccato lead here with the pluck. So juxtaposition, switch things up. That's kind of the first tip and trick to get a marshmallow type drop. So let's talk about bass now. Every Marshmallow song, especially the ones we're referencing in this video, they have a pretty simple driving, kind of uplifting bass line. And it's usually a square or a saw bass. Sometimes it's kind of a staccato, like dut, 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 or it's just a legato held out bass. So this is the patch I used. Right, and if we go into Serum here, we can change this into uh, quickly into uh, a few different types of bases that Marshmallow would use. So if I bypass LFO one here, we'll just bypass all of the des destinations. Let's take the D tune down. Let's get mono on, a little bit of glide. Right, you have a pretty uh, quintessential sounding Marshmallow bass, and let's mute the bass that's actually in the track and we'll play it uh, the bass line it with this bass right so it the way that this setup isn't meant for legato would need a lot more side chain compression i'm just simply showing you now you can create that stutter type sound the gated sound by either playing it yourself or with LFO modulation. So we'll check it out with LFO modulation real quick. I'm going to apply this LFO. Easiest way to do it is pop an LFO and serum onto our knee synth really. Pop the LFO onto your, your master gain, your output of the synth, right? So we're going to do LFO 2. We're going to go to global. We're going to do amp and let's turn it up. Right, let's turn our sustain up now on our envelope. And we can have that same LFO modulate our filter to make it more cohesive. Right, so when I played this, this uh, when the bass line is programmed in or played, I actually was going... I'm actually hitting the keys. I'm not holding down the key. And I like that because it, give, it gave me more freedom. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about the theory behind kind of a marshmallow style baseline in this type of drop. Usually it's pretty uplifting. So if we listen to this one here, we'll just solo it. It's working in an ascending fashion, right? It's going up, up and up. G, A, B, up to D. So not all marshmallow tracks do that, but if you're trying to create that uplifting vibe, that kind of helps. Now, you can also do that same progression, but we can move down. We can, we can start on the G, up to the A, down to a B, up to the D. Now, that'll have a pretty similar vibe, but it'll be a little bit different. Let me play that in. We'll listen. Right, so I changed it up a little bit in the tail end. A little less uplifting, but I still like it. I still think it's cool. But a lot of marshmallow tracks, you'll notice, are in major. And I like writing in minor. So this was definitely interesting when I was making some of the demos for s'mores. But if we change this to a minor progression where we start instead of on the G, we start on the B. Check out how it affects the overall kind of feeling of the track. <laughs> Right.
right? Still cool, but a little less, you know, quintessential marshmallow, which isn't obviously a bad thing for your guys' own tracks. I'm just simply talking about the music theory behind these types of bass lines and how they sound, right? The vibe that they give off. So now that we got the music theory out of the way, kind of the idea out of the way, let's talk about the production concepts and how it works. So I bounced this bass to, to audio so you can see what's going on a little bit easier than just blobs of MIDI. It's more universal for each DAW. You notice that in this first red track up here, this is the main bass. This one down here is the sub. The only reason I used a sub in conjunction with the main bass is because you can see in this patch in Serum, the sub is actually being used kind of as like a square tone. Right, so I, I wanted like an actual proper just sign sub bass, and that's what this is. Right, so just layered together. Now let's look at the pattern. So the pattern starts off very down oriented. Right? Now you'll notice that you know, I said it's very down oriented. The first hit comes in on the and one and and that's because I didn't want the the first you know part of the drop or the first part of each bar to be fighting with the the kick right. So just simply do this. Just take it out. I actually did use when I processed it. I used the uh, shaper box and some side chain compression to kind of duck the bass out of the way, even when it did hit. So the way it was kind of programmed pr programmed in looked like something like this. So I was playing a uh, different progression here in this this MIDI, but you'll get the idea. So side chain compressor or the compressor side chain to the kick using the stock logic and. You'll notice that that first hit is active. But I used the shaper box and set it to, it's like an LFO tool for those of you who don't know. I used the shaper box set it to one bar so it repeats every bar. So on the down of every bar, which is when a kick's definitely going to be happening in my drop, it kind of gates and ducks, so it ducks the sound out. So listen. And then that processing was just bounced to audio and cleaned up a little bit with some fades, right? I just hit escape or if for you guys it'd be t i believe and then hit a and uh yeah just applied a little bit of a fade now the first two bars of the bass are the same rhythm da, 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 da. now the third and the fourth bar i changed it up just because it made it a little bit more interesting i just took out some of the hits listen to this right so this this hit right here is not there and that's basically it just chopped it out and then again faded so that that came after the fact i didn't play it like that i was just trying to make the turnaround of make the bass and the melody with it was kind of have that little turnaround section just make it a little bit more interesting a little bit more unique now that's something that i noticed a lot when i was making these these marshmallow demos and that's something that you can apply to any music that you want it to be effective but yet simple um so, you know, less is more oftentimes and in this example having it just be da -da 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 the whole way through was just too much of the same thing so i just wanted to change something up just a little bit and all it took was kind of adding a little syncopated rhythm with the bass line And the uh, sub is doing the exact same rhythm. So that's what's going on with the bass. Nothing too crazy. Let's check out the leads now. The leads in a lot of Marshmallow tracks, they're quite simple. They're not super layered. This is probably more layered than some of his leads are. Usually they're kind of a square saw, super saw, a little bit of a bell type sound in there, and then vocal chops. So one, you know, one of those types of, of sounds put together. Now this is kind of all three. We have a little bit of like a super saw meets a square, pluck, layered it together so let's talk first about the kind of the idea of this lead now going back to the first section of this video the juxtaposition i wanted something that was a little bit staccato not as legato because the build section was a little bit more legato feeling so i wanted to juxtapose that like marshmallow often does and switch things up so that's why i'm going Right? It's, all, it's all very short. It's not, these notes aren't held out. The synth doesn't have a long sustain on, a lot of the, on, on all these. So it allows me to play kind of in the pocket. Now, I have a hard time not trying to hit a home run with every note in every melody I write. And usually when I do that, the melody suffers. So when I was writing this melody, I believe I was first going... There is no space, right? If I if I mute these, I'll play it. I'll try to play it how I did before I got the final version.
it was something like that. It was kind of stupid, but um, it, the space really helps. Space is one of the best tools you can have if you're if you're ever tweaking a melody and trying to be like, oh damn this. If you're kind of like, damn, this just isn't working. Parts of it are cool. Parts of it aren't. Just try some space. Just simply going that little itty bitty rest, and you can see that right here. If we zoom in, there's a rest right there. That makes a world of difference. And it makes it makes that turnaround with the quicker the quicker notes even more kind of uh, impactful, right? So the first two notes are. Right, it's just quarter notes, and then we have a little quick, little quick phrase right here, and then the rest, and then an even quicker four note phrase. Well, it's the same pace, but there's four notes, right? And we uh, that was not the melody at all, but well, let me solo that section for you guys. That was pretty close. So, and then it just repeats, right? Now that's kind of the idea. Now the melody is kind of an ascending melody, right? I'm going from the D to the octave D above it. Now, if I didn't do that, if I just went, right, it just doesn't have the same impact. That octave D kind of spaced it out, and that's that note up here, and it kind of fit that ascending, uplifting vibe, right? So that's really all that's going on with the theory. Um, I, I guess I can touch on the notes, that why, why I'm choosing the notes. I started out on the G note. I'm sorry, the D, which is the fifth to my, my, my G. So the bass line, the first note is G, right? And in the G chord, it's major in this key. Uh, the G chord is G, B, and D. So D is the fifth of that, right? So it kind of has this uplifting, you know, sitting on top of it type vibe. Now, if I mute these leads here, and I'll just arm the other tracks. We have all three. So let me, I'll, I'll show you how this feels. Same bass line, but we're going to start on a different note. Let's start on, let's start on the F sharp, which would be like extending that first G chord into a seventh chord. Right now, that sounds almost exactly like marshmallow. So that's all that's happening. It's the G, and then that minor, that minor, uh, kind of that minor second there, that half step, is what's going on with alone the melody specifically. It's like right now. Totally different vibe than the one that I established. Now I could start on a different note. I could start on the G. So that wasn't the greatest melody, but you get the idea. Changing the notes that you start your melody on has a big impact on the on the overall sound of the drop. Now, this kind of plays into that whole juxtaposition idea, that first thing we talked about in the video. And the reason why I started on the the D note is because it was the fifth to the G, and it kind of plays into that uplifting major feel. And the first part of this song is actually more minor oriented. So the first chord is actually B minor. It's doing this progression. It's doing some variation of that progression, essentially. So then in the drop, it's changing, right? I'm changing, you know, juxtaposition. So we're going B minor. And then the drop. So that's why it works. Now, in terms of mixing, quite simple. I would do more if I was releasing a track an actual track like this, but I try to keep the sound set stuff not, you know, don't want to put 30 plugins, 10 plugins even on every every track. So this one right here is from Silent, and just every every track the lead has sidechain compression, and we can listen to see how much that is. Just to help it get out of the way of the kick, right? Same thing with the pluck, and then some EQ just to remove some of the lows on both of those, and we also have some reverb, which all the leads, all the plucks are going to. It's just a fab filter on a bus, and also some delay. So really simple stuff with the leads. So the last tip and trick I want to offer up is kind of a bonus one. It's not necessarily going to be specific to Marshmallow, but it's spe it's specific to production in general, in my opinion. And that is, anytime you're using a reference artist or a reference track, once you get the sound close to your reference, try to add something that's unique to the track that comes from you as an artist, right? And I think you should do that for a multitude of reasons, but obviously not to just straight up copy everyone and sound like everyone else, but 
it will also kind of lead you to new places with that track, right? So in this example, in this track, I added some unique chord patches, or at least unique to a marshmallow sounding drop. And uh, it's really simple. So if I don't, if I play the drop here without it, this is kind of like what Marshmallow do. You'd have your lead, he'd have your leads and your bass. Right, and I have these chord patches in and they're really subtle. But they do contribute to the overall sound. Now, if we solo these chord patches, they're kind of cool. So they're playing essentially the same rhythm as the bass, right? Da, 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 da. And the only unique, and they, they don't happen the uh, as much on the one, right? Just like the bass, literally the same, same rhythm as the bass. But the interesting thing is they are a fifth, or if you're thinking of it in terms of semitones and a synth, plus seven, right? So if we go to massive on this patch, the other one's been rendered to audio. This is a pretty basic sound, but oscillator two is set to seven semitones above where oscillators one and three start. So if I had a C note, this oscillator two is playing a G note above it, which is creating like a fifth or like a power chord. If you guys, if you guys are guitar users, guitar users, <laughs> guitar players, I don't know what the hell that was. Right, so then I'm just playing some simple chords with it and it has a really cool tone. So that's kind of where I brought, oh, let's do something different to this drop. I don't want it to sound too much like Alone or too much like Marshmallow. I want to do something interesting. The more you do that with your tracks, especially when you use reference artists and reference tracks, the better off you'll be. All right, guys, that sums up this video. Obviously, all the sounds, samples, all that stuff came from the pack s'mores. If you're curious on that, you can check it out. But if you have any questions or comments pertaining to the information in this video, post them up below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.